I mean, do you realize most of your food travels up to 1,500 miles minimum to get to your plate? And by that time, it's already seven to 10, maybe 14 days old. And so when you buy it, next thing you know, it's already spoiling. Well, this is happening in our restaurants too. They get produce. Some, if they don't use it within that first 24 to 36 hours, they're having to toss it. As we surveyed our restaurants, we realized they throw away around 33% of the produce they buy on a regular basis. A third. We're throwing away a third of our produce because it's not edible. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. Why not take charge of your own food supply, grow it yourself? So when I look at the tower garden, questions I get all the time, well, this plastic, we're being exposed to chemicals. Actually, this plastic has gone through lots and lots of third party, te party testing. This plastic that we're dealing with has gone through third party testing and meets all the FDA standards. Not only that, Canada's looked at it. This is approved in Canada. And furthermore, Europe, who has even more stringent growing issues, has approved it as well. We'll be launching this next year. So we're excited about this. So when you can give a product that's offering food grade plastic, that's a lifetime product. This tower is a lifetime product. Remember, there's only one moving part, and that's the pump in there. There's just a pump. That's it. There's nothing else. That's the only part that can fail on you. So you have one moving part. As long as you have power, you can do this. Power and water. So in a, in a urban setting like this, right in a city, not only can we deliver to the local restaurants, the most our food travels is maybe 20 miles. Can you imagine that? 20 miles instead of 1,500 or 3,000 if you're off in, in Alaska or something? 20 miles, people. We pull it out. The roots are still in, uh, attached to it, so it's still living. They don't waste any of ours. They're not wasting any of our produce because when we deliver it to them, it's still living. The root's still on it, and they can utilize every leaf of this beautiful lettuce that we bring them or the herbs or whatever. So when you look at our carbon footprint, it's very, very tiny, very tiny. We're not using any plastics. We're not using big tractors. I mean, this is to still human power. We come in here, you know, we've seeded it. We put the seeds in here, 21 to 26 days on average. These are about 10 days old, another 16 days. This will be a full head of lettuce. So one pair of hands has planted it, another pair of hands harvest it. So two pairs of hands on average have touched your produce instead of 14 different pairs of hands on average. Know who's touching your food, be in control of your own food. Food security is becoming a big issue, not just here in the US, but around the world. I mean, all these islands, I mean, I even look at Hawaii. We're working with Hawaii because each island wants to become food sovereign. We're fortunate. Here in the US, we've got farmers that do incredible jobs. But in other parts of the world, they don't have the accessible to not only land that has good soil, but even water. Remember, 73% of the world is desert. And then of that desert, there's only 3% fresh water. So if we don't take care of the fresh water supply, we have to come up with new technologies to desalinate water, which we're doing. But we've got, we've got to become more efficient at doing this. So this can be done anywhere in the world with the technology that's been available for decades. This is not magic. Anybody can build this greenhouse wherever in the world. And you can grow food even if it's 120 out, even if it's 20 below. You can have a controlled environment. So it's, this technology allows us to grow vertical without having to waste hundreds of thousands of dollars in heating and cooling bills. Very, very important.